All right, uh, welcome back everyone to uh, Discrete slash Number Theory. Um, also, those of you joining me online, welcome. Uh, we're going to be talking now about how to test for primality. In other words, how to test whether a given natural number is prime, or what's the alternative? Remind me. What's the opposite? Composite. Of prime? Prime. Exactly. So, to build up to this technique, I'm not going to put it on the board for you just yet. But let's look at um. Let's consider a number. Let's say the number. Let's say the number seventy-two. Now, someone has a calculator. Go ahead and take the square root of seventy-two. Okay. I got eight point four nine. All right. So I'll say about eight point five. Okay. That can be a. Uh, you can denote that with a big dash. Here's one. I'll put this down here. Someone help me out here. What are some of the factors of 72? Let's work our way up. Okay, two. Two works. So that's you know, somewhere to the left of 8.5. Three. Well, uh, let's go with pairs. So if two is a factor, what else is a factor? 36. Three. 36. Two times 36 is 72. Three is the other one. And 20 what's pair? Four. Yeah, 24. Anything else? Four. Four? What goes with that? 18. Yeah. And Any more? 6 and 12. And 6 and 12, is that it? Um, nine, 8 and 9. Yes, 8 and 9. So we got one dash right up against the 8.5, and we got 9 right there. Yeah? Yes. So, I mean, clearly you all know that 72 is composite, right? But I want to focus on this picture and tell me what is 8.5 doing? Visually, um, it's breaking the it, it's dividing the left factors from the right factors. Exactly, it's providing a nice even partition of the number of factors that seventy-two has. On the left, I have one, two, three, four, five, six factors, including one. And the left, or left, I have the six factors. And on the right here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six factors as well. Now, I'm going to ignore the 1 and 72, but even if you ignore 1 and 72, you still have an even partition of the factors in this interior for this segment and this segment, yes? Yeah. Okay. That's what, that's what I want to keep in mind. So let's put a number that, uh, let's say, has a perfect, um, is a perfect square. 25. Oh, let's start with an even one. Let's look at a... Uh, uh, let's say 100. There's a hundred. There's one. What's the square root of a hundred? You don't need your calculator for this. Ten. Ten. And now let's do the same deal. Let's look at the factors that lie within this line segment of the number line. So I'm going to read them off. Two and fifty. Two works. Yeah, fifty works. Um, four and twenty-five. Four and twenty-five. Five and twenty. Five and twenty. Anyone else? Anything else? Um, I think that's it. That's it. So yeah, even though 10, this time itself, the partition line, this partition number is itself a factor of 100, unlike here, where 8.5, et cetera, et cetera, wasn't a factor of this. In either case, whether it's not a factor or whether it is a factor, it's still providing a nice partition of the factors that lie to the left and also the factors that lie to the right, and even not including 1 and 0. Likewise, let's do an odd one. An odd perfect square. So what's an odd perfect square? Someone give me one. 81. 81, okay. Square root of 81 is? 9. 9. And now let's look at the factor pairs. Okay. Um, 3 and 27. 3, 27. It's 20, that's it. Is that it? That's it. That's it, yeah. So yeah, yeah we just have uh, two factors lie to the left, two factors lie to the right. And excluding the endpoints, 181, one factor in the interior of the left segment, one factor in the interior of the right segment. Does that make sense? Okay. So, just extrapolating from this, we can see that if a number is composite, so let's say this number is A, if A is composite, which these all are, right? Then, 
there always has to exist some prime in the, let's say the left segment, okay? There has to exist one prime in here that is a factor of the number. Does that make sense? No. prime factor, or prime number p, which is a factor, and that satisfies this. One is less than this number p, which is less than or equal to what? The composite number. The composite number, but go to something to it. A squared. Square root. Square root. I'm I'm uh, I'm measuring uh, p with respect to that partition point okay. right there. Uh, so for example, let's let's do a different. Uh, for example, if I chose uh, what are the factors between uh, uh, one and nine? You know, if I did this for one and nine. Right. Yeah, we can ax this off. In this case, my partition point is the only factor that lies in between one and nine, non-inclusive. So that's why I need this less than or equal to sign there. So everything to the left of that midpoint will have a prime number? Uh, left or equal to that, to that midpoint, yes. Okay. Because, I mean, notice here, in the example one and nine, uh, unlike the examples before, I didn't have factors in the interior segments. Yeah. Um, I only had factors at the endpoints and the partition point. Okay. But still, nine is obviously a positive. Right. So I include that. Okay. Now, someone give me a prime number, though. Okay, um, 31. Yeah, 1 and 31. Well, I'm sorry, 31. And, uh, you know, 31 has factors of 1 and 31. Uh, the square root of 31 is uh, what? Give 5 or take. 5.56. 5.56, give or take. Uh, is 5.56 a factor of 1 or 31? No. <laughs> Uh, are there any factors in this segment that are factors of 31? No. No. It's prime. Uh, any factors on the right? No. No. Again, it's, uh, it's prime. So, a nice test for primality is just to take this if-then statement, if A is composite, then uh, there is some factor P that satisfies this, some prime number P that's a factor that satisfies this, and to just take the contrapositive of that statement. Okay. So, Ryan, does everyone remember what a contrapositive is? If not Q, then not P. Right. If you can show that P implies Q is a true statement, that's logically equivalent. So again, bidirectional, logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. Yes? So for example, if I am in Jackson, then I'm in Mississippi. That's logically equivalent to saying, if I'm not in Mississippi, then I'm not in Jackson. Does that make sense? All right, so let's write out that contrapositive. Because sometimes the contrapositives are uh, more useful than the, the original statement. In this case, it is. So someone, how would I write the contrapositive to this? Um, if there does not exist a prime P, which is a factor that satisfies one is less than p, which is less than the square root of a, then a is prime. Yes, if there is not just a prime p, such that that inequality is true, then a is a prime number. So this gives us a nice test. I mean, after you get too big, it gets kind of cumbersome. Uh, but it gives us a nice way of quickly testing whether a number is prime or not. So for example, uh, let's go kind of large, but not way too crazy. Uh, is, is 509 a prime number? So what's the first thing we're going to do? Um, take the square root of it. Yeah, let's take the square root. Square root of 509, it's about 22.56. 22.56? Yeah. 
All right. So I'm kind of drawing a little picture here because I think it's always important to visualize this stuff as much as possible. So there's one. There's 509. Here's my uh, partition point. What was that again, Jordan? Um, 22.56. 22.56. So I'll say 22.6. All right, what are the prime numbers? So again, this is my square root of A. That is my A. What are the prime numbers in between here? Um, the prime is between 2 and 19. Uh, yeah, so 2 is 1. What's another one? 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. 5, here, let's go. Here. 2, 3, Five, what? Seven. Seven. Eleven. Eleven. And contribute you? Thirteen. Thirteen. What else? Seventeen. Seventeen and? Nineteen. Nineteen. So I really should amend this statement here a little bit. If there's not as a prime P such that this is true, P divides what? Um, a. Yeah. If there's not as a prime P such that this is true, and there's not as a prime P such that P divides from taken from this interval, P divides A, then uh, A has to be prime. So all you gotta do is say 509 divided by all these numbers and see if it's a whole number. So you can use your calculator for this. Uh, 509 over 2. Does that work? No. Yeah. That's clearly a decimal. So let's look at the others. What about 509 divided by 3? No. Uh, no. No, that's not divisible. No. 5, no. So I'm just going to say no, no. What about 7? Does that work? 7 does not. Does 11 work? No. No. 13? Uh, no. 17? No. No? 19? 5, uh, one second. You don't have a calculator. Why are you nodding your head? No, no, it doesn't divide by Because I know, it's a prime number. Oh, okay. Intuition. Intuition. Yeah, intuition. Yeah, so 509 is prime. So notice, there are, there are so many more numbers between 22.6 and 509 than there are between 1 and 22.6. So this is really use, a good, really useful way to test for primality. Um, let's see here. I want you guys to uh, try these examples. On your own. Go ahead and now test. Oh, it's in my pocket. There we go. I want you to answer the same question, but is is seven hundred and one a prime number? And also do it for a thousand and nine. So have a go at that for about a minute or two. All right, everyone. How did we uh, how do we decide on these two? Yes for both. No for both. I got yes for both. Yes prime for both. Yes. Okay. So, well, right before with this number five and nine, we decided that this was in fact prime. These two are a bit bigger, so the square root of a is also going to be a bit bigger. Jordan, what do you get for the square root of seven hundred one? The square root of seven hundred one. I got twenty six point four seven. Well, you can say twenty six point five. 26.5. So yeah, what makes this technique so useful is that notice there are so fewer numbers in between here and here than there are between 26.5 and 701. So in the primes between uh, 1 and 26.5, my last segment, uh, same as it was for um, the earlier problem. And we're adding 23. Yeah. And that's it. So 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and what were, what were the problems we're adding? Uh, just 23. Just 23? Uh, I believe so. So look at that. Um, all right, so you just, after you go ahead, you went ahead and tried to divide these, mm -hmm. did any of them turn out to be an answer? Uh, no. I didn't know. None of them worked. Why'd you write seven before five? Uh, I just talked. I was talking before my hand. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so none of them worked, so this is in fact prime. All right, what about uh, 
A thousand and nine. You so square root that, what you get? The square root of a thousand nine, I got thirty one point seven six. Yeah, so thirty one point seven six. Something. Something, yeah, something, something after the thirty one. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, again, uh, notice again, so many, so fewer numbers in between these two numbers than there are between here. And also notice, how big of a jump was there from 701 to 1009? Over 300. Yeah, about, about 300, over 300. 308. Uh, 308. Uh, how much of a jump is there from 26.5 to 31.7, give or take? 10. 5. Oh, 5. So nowhere near as much, right? Right. right. And what does that mean uh, for the number of primes we have to test? It's going to be even less. It's going to be about the same, but uh, it, it's not going to be much more. Right. So in between here, we have all these primes. Say right there. And do we have to add any primes to this? 29 and 31. 29 and 31. So we just have two more things to test. Uh, so again, even though when you see something like uh, 1009 compared to 701, you think, oh gosh, this is this might be a much tougher problem. In fact, it's not. You just have a, a little bit more work with the 2931. But again, as it turns out, when you take all these numbers and try to divide them uh, into 1009, none of them yield an integer value. So this one also is prime. They're all prime. We good?